I recently purchased a high-rise condominium located conveniently right opposite the train station. Speaking of unexpected topics, why did he suddenly start talking about this? He did buy it after all, and it's truly impressive. The view from the condominium is stunning and the rooms are impeccably clean. However, I'm a bit lost here. It's shocking to discover that he secretly bought this luxurious condo while I was visiting my parents. Can you believe it? Where did he even get the money for such a purchase? Amidst my shock, he nonchalantly mentioned that he made the down payment with money from selling our previous place. He even declared he'd be moving in with his parents in their lovely home, leaving no room for me. He chose to live with his parents without discussing it with me and abruptly asked me to leave. I was so stunned. I couldn't find the words to respond. My name is Carol and I am a 31-year-old housewife, currently eight months pregnant. The anticipation of meeting my baby grows every day. My husband, Terry, is two years my senior at 33, and he has a career with a prominent company. We've been married for four years, and I was overjoyed to finally become pregnant after some difficulties with conception. However, I'm also quite nervous about experiencing childbirth for the first time. To find some peace and relaxation during this tense time, I often visit my in-law's house. On one such visit, Terry's sister-in-law, Madison, asked me, Carol, you're about to have a baby soon, huh? What do you think motherhood will be like? Honestly, it still doesn't feel real to me yet. Madison is actually the wife of Terry's brother and one of the main reasons I enjoy visiting my in-laws. While I don't really communicate with my brother-in-law, Madison and I have grown close. She's also a housewife and resides with my in-laws, which is especially important since my mother-in-law's mobility worsened two years ago. The family was concerned about leaving her alone, so Madison, being married to the eldest son, has taken on the role of caring for her during the day. Though my mother-in-law mainly uses a cane for walking and can manage quite well on her own, Madison, who has experience as a caregiver, stepped in to help without hesitation. When she learned about my mother-in-law's mobility issues, I was truly impressed by how decisively Madison handled the situation. My brother-in-law and Madison have a four-year-old daughter, and Madison's experience as a mother provides me with some comfort and reduces my anxiety about pregnancy and childbirth. As the weeks went by, the arrival of my baby drew closer. With only a month left until my due date, I decided it was time to head to my parents' house to prepare for the birth. Despite the heaviness of my belly, I enjoyed shopping for baby items and daydreaming about our future together. It was refreshing to spend an extended period at my parents' house after such a long time. However, three days past my due date, I began to experience contractions. I tried reaching out to my husband, but he was unreachable neither answering calls nor responding to texts. Initially, I worried he might be caught up at work or in some trouble, but as my labor pains intensified, there was no time left to ponder his whereabouts. The only thing on my mind was the impending birth of our child. Eventually, I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Holding her in my arms for the first time brought an indescribable joy that overshadowed everything else. My husband, who had promised to be there, missed the birth. Exhausted from the delivery, I didn't have the energy to confront him immediately, so I sent him a text announcing the birth of our daughter and then fell asleep. When I awoke, I heard someone calling my name. Are you still asleep? Huh, Terry? Is it morning already? My husband cheerily asked as I opened my eyes to see him and his parents standing there. Despite my previous request for privacy post-delivery, here they were. Why didn't you come here yesterday? I asked him, irritation clear in my voice. He didn't respond directly to my question, which was frustrating. It couldn't be helped, he replied casually, as if his absence and the sudden appearance of his parents were just minor issues. The situation was far from ideal, and I found myself grappling with a mix of emotions from joy at my daughter's arrival to disappointment in my husband's actions. When I needed him most, my husband chose to have sushi with his parents, which he justified as a prior commitment. 
Even after their meal, he didn't show up at the hospital because he had been drinking and thought he'd be more of a nuisance than a help in his condition. It was disheartening to know he was out enjoying himself while I was in labor. When he finally visited, oblivious to my annoyance, he casually asked, Where's our baby? I told him she was in the nursery, a healthy baby girl. Upon hearing this, my mother-in-law grimaced and muttered, What a girl, such a useless wife, shocking me with her harsh words. My father-in-law chimed in with disappointment as well, calling both Madison and me pathetic. It hurt that instead of gratitude for enduring childbirth, I received criticism. Even Terry wasn't pleased. Oh, damn it, I knew it was a girl but hoped a little for a boy, he said, echoing his parents' sentiments about wanting a grandson, especially since the first grandchild was also a girl. Their disappointment was palpable, yet to me, the gender of our child didn't matter. She was precious regardless. Amidst this turmoil, Terry sided with his parents, deepening my dismay. Although I was seething with anger, the physical and emotional toll of childbirth left me too exhausted to confront them further. Thankfully, a nurse, overhearing our conversation, intervened and asked them to leave, providing me with some much-needed peace. Since then, Terry hasn't visited us in the hospital. On the day of our discharge, I called my parents to pick us up and take us to their home, not wanting to return to a house filled with tension. I pondered over the changes in Terry. He used to be more caring when we first married. I suspected his transformation might be linked to a significant mistake at work two years ago, which led to a considerable loss for his company. Although his colleagues managed to mitigate the fallout, preventing him from facing direct consequences, the incident had derailed his career trajectory significantly. No matter how hard he worked, he couldn't regain his former standing. This setback might have contributed to his detachment and recent coldness, even at home. Adding insult to injury, one of his juniors at the company had now become his boss, a colleague who was initially less competent than him. This reversal of roles at work might be impacting his behavior at home, making him more distant and less empathetic than before. Reflecting on his past mistakes at work, I could see that Terry was struggling to cope. The pressure seemed to make him increasingly irritable about minor things. Despite my growing dissatisfaction with his behavior, I held on to hope that the birth of our baby might inspire him to change. Yet, it seemed he hadn't even tried to improve, leaving me deeply worried about our family's future. Amidst my anxiety, Terry suddenly called me. Hey, when are you coming back? You've been at your parents for nearly a month since the baby arrived. I wasn't ready to return home, but I replied, Sorry, I'm coming home soon. It's time to start anew and get it together for our daughter. I then told him I had many baby items to bring back and asked if he could help us with the transport. His response left me stunned. No, you don't have to bring all that stuff back. I mean, I have other business with you. Maybe I should have just told you this over the phone rather than ask you to come back. Confused, I pressed him for clarity. Then, he dropped another bombshell. I bought a high-rise condo right in front of the station. I was bewildered. What do you mean? Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? He continued, explaining how the condo offered a spectacular view and how clean it was. I struggled to follow his train of thought as he revealed he had moved out of our apartment and into this luxury condo while I was away. Where did the money come from? You shouldn't be able to afford a loan on your salary. While I panicked, he nonchalantly added, I made a down payment by selling our house. I was in shock barely processing the information as he delivered these facts piecemeal, adding to my confusion. What do you mean you sold our house? Where are your parents living now? His excitement was evident as he quickly responded, Daddy and Mommy are living with me in the condo now. I'm going to live with them in this great house, so I don't need a parasite like you around. I was floored by his declaration that he had decided to live with his parents without my consent and was now effectively kicking me out, 
Speechless, I couldn't muster a response as he abruptly began referring to his parents in childlike terms and announced that they were all living together in the condo. Adding insult to injury, he then insulted me, saying, You're cocky for just a housewife. You're useless without my salary. Besides, you've been nothing but a couch potato these days. His words cut deep, reflecting a harshness and disdain that left me questioning not only his love, but what our future held. His sudden, drastic changes in behavior and decisions about our lives without consultation were not only shocking, but deeply hurtful. During my pregnancy, when I was dealing with severe morning sickness and busy with preparations for our child's arrival, my husband showed no sympathy. After our baby was born, he cruelly remarked that I was useless because the baby wasn't a boy. He even mentioned that his parents thought it would be better for him to be with a younger woman who could bear a son rather than staying with me. Additionally, he told me his parents no longer wanted to live with my brother and his wife, indicating a lot of family tension. He informed me that he had stored my belongings in a storage room and instructed me to collect them soon. The conversation turned even colder as he bluntly stated that he had sent me divorce papers and expected me to file them promptly. Then, without waiting for any response, he hung up. I was left in shock, struggling to understand how I had ended up married to such a heartless person. Despite feeling regret over my choice, I knew I had to pull myself together for the sake of our daughter. After some time to reflect, I resolved to sever ties with him and start anew. I decided not to let him dictate my life any longer. Divorce, bring it on, I thought to myself, determined to show him that he would regret this more than me. My parents were furious when I explained the situation and immediately supported me in taking legal action. As soon as I received the divorce papers, I signed and filed them. Half a month later, my husband unexpectedly showed up at my parents' home, angry about a substantial withdrawal from his bank account. He slammed his bank book on the table and demanded an explanation. Calmly, I responded, Haven't you heard of the division of property? That's what this is. The bank account is in my name and I won't give you a cent. Surprised by my assertiveness, he retorted, You couldn't have earned that much money. Remember? Your salary dropped because of your mistake at work and you think you can claim this money? I stood my ground. I've been working from home and managed to match your salary. Now we're going to divide our assets, especially since you're the one who wanted a divorce. He was taken aback. You're kidding me, he said in disbelief. That's when my father, who had remained silent, spoke up. If you want to dispute this further, we can settle it in court. How dare you treat my daughter this way? The situation had escalated beyond mere personal grievances. It was now a matter of legal and financial assertion. I was ready to fight for what was rightfully mine and protect my and my daughter's future. I deeply regret that my daughter had to experience such turmoil because of Terry. One day when he tried to confront us again, my father, who is a police officer, gave him a stern look that scared him off and he quickly left our home. That was the moment I finally severed ties with Terry for good, and we also resolved the division of assets. Since then, I've been living with my parents, focusing on raising my daughter. Parenting has become more familiar to me, and my daughter's adorable nature makes every day joyful. Life has been good, filled with the happiness that only a child can bring. A few months into our new life, I started receiving persistent calls from an unknown number. Initially, I ignored them, thinking they might be work-related, but the caller was persistent. Eventually, I answered, and to my surprise, it was Terry. Hello, Carol, he said hesitantly. What do you want? How are you doing? I asked, not interested in small talk. Can you come back here? I'm having trouble paying my mortgage for the condo, and I might get kicked out soon, he confessed. Oh, so you're short on cash? I replied, not particularly sympathetic. Yes, I've used up all my savings. Dad injured his back and had to quit his job, and Mom has been spending recklessly bragging to her friends about our life in the condo, he explained, his voice filled with desperation. I wasn't surprised. 
Terry had never managed his finances well and without his father's income and his mother's spending habits, it was clear he couldn't afford the condo's expenses on his own. My bank balance is zero and I've been told I need to leave if I can't pay by next week. Please come back, Carol. We loved each other once, he pleaded. After a brief laugh, I responded calmly, give me a break. You just want to use me whenever it suits you. You're hoping I'll come back, not just for love, but for my salary, and to handle all the housework, right? There was a pause. Also, remember when you called me a parasite? Would I not just be in the way now? He tried to backtrack. I just chose the wrong words back then. I pressed on. What about Madison and your brother? Are they still with your parents? He sighed. They moved out and are living on their own now. They had a big argument with our parents. My brother wanted Dad to live more sensibly, but that just made things worse. Terry's situation seemed dire, but it was a product of his own choices, a tangled mess of financial and familial errors. It was clear he was looking for an easy way out by trying to pull me back into his life. However, I had moved on, focused on a better, healthier future for myself and my daughter, free from the chaos and manipulation of my past with Terry. Then my brother-in-law, who is usually so composed, finally had enough. I heard he stormed out after telling his parents he'd cut ties with them if they continued to disrespect his wife, Madison. It's heartening to know he stands up for her. He seems like a decent guy. As for Terry, his plea for me to return was met with disbelief. Come back to you? Are you serious? I'm already overwhelmed just taking care of our daughter. I don't have the energy to deal with people like you. I couldn't help but comment on how odd it was for him to still call his parents daddy and mommy. It's just not suitable for someone his age. He tried to backtrack, suggesting I bring our daughter over to live with them. Weren't you planning to live with her when you first asked me to come back? I questioned. He fumbled, clearly having forgotten his lies. I would never let my daughter live with such a despicable father. Don't ever call me again, and if you show up, I'll have my dad arrest you, I warned him. His response was a feeble sound, possibly recalling my father's intimidating presence, but I hung up and blocked his number. Not long after, he tried to reach me with a new number, so I changed mine to cut him off completely. Later, I reconnected with Madison, who reached out to apologize for her silence. She explained that they had moved to the countryside and struggled with setting up the internet. Madison and her family now lived in a tranquil rural area, and she invited me over. I visited her for the first time and was charmed by the serene, natural setting, an ideal place for a child to grow up. During my visit, my brother-in-law shared that Terry and his parents were eventually evicted from their condo due to unpaid debts and were now struggling financially, a stark contrast to their previous lifestyle. It was a bit of poetic justice. Meanwhile, I've been working from home and living comfortably at my parents' house. The flexibility of my job allows me to work from anywhere, so I spent a few relaxing days at Madison's house. I considered the possibility of moving closer to Madison in the future, hopeful for what lies ahead for my daughter and me. Reflecting on the whole ordeal, buying a high-rise condo on a whim while your wife is pregnant seems absurd unless you're quite wealthy. It's strange to take such a risk on a normal income. In any case, I'm relieved she's rid of such an unsavory husband. I hope to continue enjoying my peaceful life possibly relocating near Madison and her family, where everyone gets along well, and fostering a happy environment for my daughter.